I'm really looking forward to see what Sakani will do with V3. This was an upper update. Welcome back on the channel, my name is Alex. It's a very popular shoe, it's a shoe that worked for many, many runners, many of you. Um, you submitted it a lot of times in the shoe rotation series. It's the Sakani Endorphin Speed um, 2. You submitted the one and I'm referring to the one as the one that really, um, you know, was so popular and worked so well for, for many runners in 2020. This is um, the updated version of uh, this one. The, this is a V1 and this is the updated version. This is V2. Quick disclaimer, this shoe was given to me by my local uh, shop, Trax, here in Brussels. Uh, so thanks a lot, Trax. And you can go check their website. I'm gonna put it uh, in the description of the video uh, if you're uh, here in, in Belgium or in some other countries where they are shipping. You can check their uh, website. Thanks a lot, Trax. You know, um, it's it's difficult to review a shoe that A, was very popular in the first version, to which the second doesn't bring a lot of new stuff. And also it released quite a while ago. So I'm gonna do my best and try and bring some value, meaning, you know, the numbers as always. This is maybe stuff that uh, you haven't heard about this shoe on other uh, media channels, um, you know, other articles, whatever you, you read or watch, and then give you my opinion about it, because uh, this is pretty much the best I can do. You know it, uh, so at least many of you know it, so I'm also looking forward to hear from you in the comments, discuss about the Endorphin Speed 1 or 2, whatever, um, model you may have. Numbers very quickly, uh, starting with the weight. Uh, this one, V2, comes at 246 grams in my size US 11, EU 45. And with a little inconsistency between the two shoes, right and left, five grams or so, so nothing uh, major either. But quite funny, my V1, which I haven't weighed in a long time, um, is coming at 260 or 262, you have the numbers on your screen, with a big, big, big inconsistency between the two shoes, 15 grams, so more than a f um, almost a full size, more than half a size, um, which is normally ab about 9, 10 grams. Quite funny, so big inconsistency in my V1 between right and left, smaller inconsistency, 5 grams in my V2, and V2 in my case is lighter than V1, I think, but you can confirm if you have the two versions that um, for many people, and it, this is the way that it was officially announced, V2 was supposed to be a bit heavier than, than V1. This is not my case, but, but still. Width of the platform, uh, this is one of the most narrow platform um, out there. Only, I think, a couple of shoes, you know, disregarding spikes, a couple of shoes, road shoes, are uh, more narrow than the Endorphin Speed. Uh, so very, very narrow platform and you can feel it um, when running. It's, it's certainly not, you know, um, people with wide feet, I think this is a case where you, you may want to avoid this shoe. And also people with overall uh, stability issues, welcome back to that, but the, um, the very narrow width of the platform doesn't help either. Uh, Durimeter scores, no changes in the Power Run PB. Midsole, so this is a PBAD or TPA type of, of um, compound. No changes between V1 and V2. This is still in the, I think, 32, 32 and a half ballpark in terms of geometry score. Uh, for those of you new on the channel, first of all, welcome. Don't hesitate to like the video, subscribe if you aren't a subscriber yet. We are almost, uh, you know, very close to 3,000 subscribers. So if you want to help grow the channel to that, uh, symbolic threshold that would be fantastic but if you're new the geometer score is ranging from 0 to 100 0 being super super soft and 100 being super super hard so this is 32 no changes with v1 and to give you a comparison the upper layer of zoomax which is also piba pibax even on um, the nike vaporfly next percent is also at uh, 32 so um, this is actually a soft type of midsole. 
they are, there are softer um, metal, metal compounds out there below 32, but this is quite soft. And it translates to the right. We'll come back to that in a second. Last but not least, stack heights. We're looking at 35 and a half millimeters in the heel, 27 and a half in the forefoot, eight millimeter drop. I think, you know, one of the reasons why many people enjoy this shoe is um, that it's very versatile. At least it, it matches different running styles, different gait cycles, different ability levels. And eight millimeter drops um, is, a, is a good drop for that matter because um, it suits different uh, runners, different needs. And it's quite, you know, a, a golden middle, if you want, between higher drops, which may be less, uh, you know, ideal for some gait cycles and uh, lower drops, which again may not work for everyone. Uh, so this is one of the reasons I think this shoe was very uh, popular. What are the changes compared to V1? So no changes in width, width of the platform, small change in the weight, no changes in the midsole compound, and uh, you know the, the name doesn't change, but the, the compound itself doesn't change either. The geometry score is the same. This is not official, but maybe the, the forefoot is a tiny bit more flexible on V2, but this is just my, my impression. The official changes are Upper update, a more breathable mono mesh, but to be honest, for me, this is pretty much the same, at least very, very similar. You can see it's thinner here and indeed maybe more breathable, although it's hard to judge um, on breathability now that temperatures have um, dropped quite, quite a bit here in Brussels. Small suede uh, overlay here holding up the, the first row of laces. So this is one of the differences that you can see visually be, be between V1 and, and uh, V2. Snogger, tighter heel, heel cup, but same here. To be honest, yes, there's, there's a bit of a difference, but it doesn't impact the fits dramatically for me. It doesn't change the ride at all, to be honest, or, you know, like maybe half a percent uh, change. This is bottom line of this, but I'm going to give you my final assessment in a, in a few minutes. If you have the opportunity to pick either of these shoes for a good price point, V1 or V2, you know, fire in the hole. Um, go for them. Whatever preference you may have in terms of colorway, V1 or V2, go for them. I think V1 is discounted heavily at some places, but V2 is also quite discounted already and you can find them at good prices. So just go for any, any of them. The, at least the changes that are officially stated as uh, being changes by Sukoni aren't that, that visible and aren't that, that noticeable. So yeah, right of the shoe, it's still that very cushioned, forgiving. Um, I wouldn't call it energetic, but it, it definitely has some, some extra pop with the, the nylon plastic plates uh, here in the forefoot. You can feel a nice roll and a nice propulsion, very flexible forefoot. So for people, I think, you know, lighter runners, um, maybe runners with less experience and cadence runners, I would say this is a shoe for you because you can really easily bend that forefoot and really use that plate. Unlike on some other shoes where the plate is really rigid and you need to push very, very hard in order to bend it and take advantage of it. Here it's not the case, and it's also one of the reasons I think this shoe, the Endorphin Speed, V2, but V1 as well, are so popular. Many, many runners can take advantage of the little bonus, um, uh, you know, added by the, the plate, the nylon plate here on this shoe. Stability, and this is interesting because uh, Mary, my girlfriend, if you haven't e met her or, you know, if you haven't seen a video with her, you can go check the first one where she mentions why she didn't like the Endorphin Speed V1, which she tried, she didn't keep it. At least she, I don't, I'm not even sure she, she received it. She maybe just tried it in a shop, I'm not sure. But she didn't like it because her arch um, was collapsing. She really had, you know, I wouldn't say big stability issue with this shoe, but some stability issues and she didn't like this shoe. And I'm not sure if it's just because she mentioned it recently and or because my it was always the case for me and now I'm paying more attention. Whatever the reason may be, I'm more and more aware or at least more and more conscious of some arch collapsing myself in this shoe. 
nothing dramatic and it works for me, but I can imagine people looking for uh, stability, people overpronating, this shoe may not be for you. So stability runners, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this shoe or maybe with your own, you know, orthotics in it, but as such, I would maybe stay away from it. White fits, people with extra stability needs, this is not uh, the best pick for you. However, who is this shoe for? Um, again, light runners, beginners who want to try a shoe with a with a leg, with the, the plate, you know, with an extra uh, addition, which is the, the nylon plate. This could be a good idea. First marathon, why not? I mean, any distance, 10K, half marathon, marathon. Especially if you don't have a ton of experience racing, this can be um, a very, very solid pick. You will get that extra lever um, from, the, from the plate. You will have a very comfortable and um, cushioned uh, ride for longer distances. I even know of some people um, racing, uh, you know, ultra races on, on the roads with this shoe. So definitely, you know, you have the comfort, you have uh, that forgiveness and a very pleasant ride. My own opinion on the shoe, uh, although I have more miles on V1 than on V2, this is a, a nice shoe, but for some reason myself, I'm very happy at the end of a workout, at the end of a run with this shoe. And then I put it back on the shelves or in the, in the box and I struggle to pick it again and again and again. It's that kind of shoe. Um, I have a few in mind where, you know, I'm happy when I uh, just finished completely the run with it, but then I have other preferences that I just pick easier um, compared to this one. Overall, you know, nothing to complain about. I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's great that Sakani came up with that shoe because many people discovered something different, something plated, something with, um, a different midsole compound uh, here and um, it, it was a great innovation and a very big success. I'm really looking forward to see what Sakani will do with V3. This was an upper update, minor update to be honest and again uh, you know pick whichever you want whichever is uh, the at the best price point in your local store or online. I'm very curious about V3. It will certainly be a more radical type of update midsole most likely and it's very hard once you have that success with the model in your lineup to change it to improve it to try new stuff so uh, i'm looking forward to that i'm also looking forward for your thoughts in the comments um, i hope you enjoyed this review i hope you enjoyed the footage on the canal uh, and all the all the different uh, extra b-rolls that i tried to uh, include in this video let me know if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It does help the channel. It does help to promote the video and you know, show it to other runners, other people out there. In any event, um, enjoy your run today, guys. Enjoy your rides and uh, go beyond your limits if you are racing this weekend, especially if you're racing in this shoe. Let us know, have you already raced in the Sakani Endorphin Speed? I'm very curious to hear. I haven't um, and I most likely won't, although it could be interesting. Um, oh, I haven't mentioned, how am I using this shoe? My favorite workout with this shoe is heel reps. Why so? Because of the flex here in the forefoot, heel reps work really well for me with this shoe. Uh, this is something I forgot and I think is, is quite relevant in this review. Again, thanks a lot to Trax for giving me this shoe. Go beyond your limits this weekend in your races and take care guys, bye bye.